Hey guys. So, bad EM, thanks for having me here today. Uh, when you guys look around this beautiful setting that we're in, I just want you to remind yourself of two things. One is that uh, I'm not like the others. I don't do kumbaya and fluffy talks and uh, happy ethereal discussions. I'm here to bring you down to a good dose of reality. And the other is, as nice as this place in, please don't forget that we are in Africa. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about emergency medicine in our context and why I think we're doing it wrong. So we know that people join emergency medicine to do the cool stuff. We want to crack chests, we want to stick needles and sharp things in people and we want to save some lives. Pretty cool. But I will challenge you to say that I suspect that's probably not most of what we see in our day-to-day -day jobs. And in fact, even more so, I'm not sure our training actually trains us for what we do see. And I would propose that we may not even call this emergency medicine anymore. You see, a long time ago when I was still young, and, and bear in mind that it was my birthday yesterday, so I may have a, a bit of a hangover, so I'm a little acerbic in my comments, but we saw GPs for general stuff. We saw the specialists for specialist stuff, and everyone made appointments to see these people. And if you had an emergency, which was quite rare because you're normally taken by your mother to the pharmacy or stuff to get sorted out before that happened, but if you had a real emergency, you went to your GP who stitched you up, or you got taken to a hospital and they called some people and hopefully they saved you, or they didn't. But there weren't really emergency centers and casualties as we know them today. So the problem is now we've entered the era of Ronald McDonald. It's McDonald's medicine time. Everybody wants to see the same, uh, one person right now immediately get sorted out and everything needs to happen on the first visit. So where we are now is that G GPs still see general stuff. We know that. The specialists like to overcharge to see the specialist stuff. No one wants to make appointments anymore because it's drive-through medicine. No one has a clue what emergency physicians do or their role. So they kind of see everything. And everything is an emergency. And it is because if your child has got a fever, it's an emergency. Maybe not to the EP. <laughs> yeah, children are just small adults. Yeah, so it's fine. Uh, so that's the problem we deal with now. So the issue is that we know ECs get lots of patients. We know that many of these patients aren't what we would define true emergencies, or as we would like to define them anyway. We know that the medics, be they paramedics, be they doctors, be they nurses who are working in these environments, who are trained for emergencies, don't really want to see these patients. We, we want to crack chests. We want to save lives. We don't want to see the people with the snotty noses. But the problem is patients aren't particularly good at differentiating their level of acuity when it comes to an emergency. And we can't really expect them to be. And for those of you, everyone here is probably medical. I'm hoping they're medical, otherwise you're really wasting your weekend. Um, <laughs> you know, is that your family members probably aren't very good at doing that as well. So they phone you up for what you would think are ridiculous things, thinking it's an emergency. So because of this, we work in ECs that look like that, completely overcrowded, full of patients everywhere. We mix not-so-sick patients up with very sick patients. We can't find the sick ones. We can't find the not-so-sick ones. We can't get to our gloves. We can't get to our equipment. We can't find a place for patients to lie down to examine them. The ambulances are outside, stacked up for hours at a time sometimes, with patients just trying to get into the ECs. Not a great place to be. And because of FOMED and social media, we take to social media channels. So this is from some people who will be talking to you later. We have a lot of people in our ECs and they're very sick and what are we going to do and let's form a working group to see how we can sort it out. And everyone agrees, yes. And look at that comment there, definitely keen. A full recess in overcrowded EC is a daily occurrence at Easter River Hospital. That's not normal, guys. Every day is a major incident. Or you can be more eloquent like other people in this room and say things like, mm, except now this isn't working, 
There we go. People, it's fucking rough at Carl Bremer Hospital the last few months. <laughs> Anyone else feeling the burn? <laughs> He'll be chatting to you later, by the way. You recognize who that might be. <laughs> I've blacked out his face for you. But guess what? Everyone is feeling the burn. And it's going to the point where it's going to explode and topple over. You see, we know EC overcrowding is a real problem. We know that it causes harm. From an EMS perspective, we know it leads to ambulance diversions. Long handover times. It leads to long transit times and a lack of ambulance availability. So that's kind of a double-edged sword because not only are patients waiting to get in, but now you can't get patients out who might need to go to other facilities. From a people perspective, and this is the only fluffy comment I'll have in my uh, presentation, is we know it's a very high pressure work environment. Okay, there's a lot of burnout. Staff attrition. Okay, and this is what we talk on the fight. Okay, compassion fatigue. People don't care in the ECs because they cannot care anymore in the ECs. Because they've seen the same thing every day, every time they are on shift, and they've just given up. Because if they carried on caring, they would either have to leave or they'd go crazy. And that's the reality of the situation. And then borders, medical borders, surgical borders, every single type of border. They stay for long in the ECs. They shouldn't be there. They should be up in the wards. And what happens? We increase mortality, okay, and we have increased medical errors. It takes away from our focus on the emergency patients that should be there. But I'm going to tell you guys something now which you might not like me for. You've probably hated me already. It's your fault. It's not their fault. It's your fault. <laughs> How can you say that? Well, I'm saying it because think about it. What are we currently doing to deal with this issue? Well, we run campaigns. Okay, we have policies. Who should go where? When they should be seen? Who should be seen first? We have these little education sessions, those teachable moments at two in the morning when you're covered with blood from the patient you've just seen and you tap on the guy's shoulder and say, Butty, you know, you should have actually gone to the day hospital for this. <laughs> Yeah, great teachable moment. And I love this comment, that's a UK ambulance. You wouldn't call the Coast Guard if you fell in a puddle. I mean, clearly these media campaigns are very successful, or not at all. So the problem is we try and change the patient. But guess what? We can't change the patient. So let's, Auntie Mildred takes her child who's fallen at a soccer game, hurt his arm. She finds transport through to a clinic. She waits in a long queue. She eventually gets seen by a healthcare practitioner. Maybe it's broken, maybe it's not broken. You probably need an x-ray. We don't have x-rays here. Let's call an ambulance and transfer you through. Wait longer for an ambulance. And in the Western Cape, and we're good in the Western Cape, because I work for EMS, so I can say that, <laughs> is that if you're not urgent or emergent as a transfer, you are going to wait a long time. Then I get through to the district hospital. I wait because I'm not triaged orange or red, and if I am triaged orange or red, I'm probably wait anyway. <laughs> okay, that's a reality, because you saw what those units looked like. Okay, I see the healthcare practitioner, they do an x-ray, and then my problem is probably resolved. Get a pop, get a back slab, or there's no break, go home. Spend more money getting home. That takes upwards of 12 hours. Longer. Guess what's going to happen next time? It doesn't even matter if it's the same problem. I call an ambulance, I probably buff my condition, or the arm's broken, but it's poking out through the left nostril. Come immediately. <laughs> you know, be bar, be bar, we get there. Take you through to the district hospital. You get seen by a doctor there or a nurse. The problem is resolved, and this issue takes less than six hours. And guess what I'm going to do next time? And guess what I'm going to tell my friends and family to do next time? You see, my good friend Albert Einstein, who I chatted to last week on Twitter, <laughs> says the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. And that's what we're doing. You see? So we'll look to other countries that have been doing this longer and better than us. I mean, EM as a specialty is, is new in this country. So how's the UK doing? Pretty crap. <laughs> 
pretty crap. Read that. We need to rethink our assumptions as many of the magic bullet solutions suggested miss the point. Patients are waiting up to eight hours in ambulances to get into the EC. And 500 patients died last year from overcrowding. And in the US it's no better. In 2004, there was a study saying overcrowding is an issue. ASEP, the American College of Emergency Physicians, has an entire section on their website dedicated to medical boarding and overcrowding. They're not doing it right. We sure as hell aren't doing it right. You see, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. And we maybe tweak it here and there, twist it around, fiddle and faff, but we do the same thing again and again and we expect a different result. So I'm proposing something, and this relies on everyone sitting in this room as the future medical leaders, except for Shahim, because he's a, a current medical leader, of course. We need to change and mix EM up. I propose we change the name to acute and ambulatory care. It's not emergencies we see anymore. We shouldn't be calling it emergency medicine. We need to change the way we train. We need to involve our allies, paramedics, OTs, physios. First presentation resolution of problems. Don't get them coming back. Don't defer, don't refer. Listen to what the community wants because that's what they're going to keep on doing. And stop being a dick. Okay? <laughs> Lose the ego. Okay. The options adapt and evolve or we'll be building more corridors. Thanks very much.